Hello, everyone, and welcome to this Moodle Academy webinar, What's New in Moodle 4.5? I'm Mary Cooch, Education Manager here at Moodle HQ, and I have with me Helen Foster, Community Engagement Advisor, also at Moodle HQ. And we are going to talk to you today about the main features, other interesting improvements, and more relating to the latest version of Moodle, Moodle LMS 4.5, which is in fact a long-term support release, and that is very important for some people, meaning that you get security support for longer than a normal release. So the way we're going to do this is I am going to start, I'm going to talk about the two main features that have been heavily promoted and that our people are excited about. And that is what we're calling our AI subsystem, the very beginning of integrating AI tools into Moodle for teachers and learners to benefit, and subsections in courses, some, something also uh, very popular and requested. Helen will move on to talk about some other interesting improvements, and then I will finish with what's more for administrators and teachers in an attempt to be as comprehensive as possible. We can't cover everything, we've done our best, but uh, if you do the course that is attached to this webinar, then uh, you can learn about what's new for admins and what's new for teachers and potentially get two badges depending on your preferences. Okay, so let's begin. Um, the AI subsystem is probably the feature that's been the most promoted in Moodle 4.5. And it basically means that there is now a new admin setting in the admin interface where an administrator can collect, connect their Moodle site to an AI provider and therefore use uh, that functionality for teachers and learners to benefit from AI within courses. Currently coming with Moodle 4.5 is the open AI provider and the Azure provider. Um, this is very much the initial stages, the foundations. There will be other providers. Uh, there's also some work on open source uh, compat providers compatible with open AI, for example, Olama. Uh, one of our developers is this very moment working on some user documentation to help you get set up. And so uh, what we're seeing in 4.5 is the very beginnings of this. And we have as examples, three what we call placements, and they will allow you to generate text or image from a prompt uh, or to summarize course content. So we're going to look at all of these now in a little bit more detail. So let's start with the admin. So as an administrator, if you go to site administration general, you will have a new section called AI, and it has uh, a link AI providers and AI placements. If we go to AI providers, this is where you can enable and manage the setting for currently Azure AI and Open AI API providers. And we've got Open AI enabled here. This, the settings link is where you would go to add your API key, your secrets that you would get from OpenAI or Azure. You can also there specify which of the placements you want that particular provider to use. In theory, you could, for example, have OpenAI providing the uh, content summary functionality and Azure providing the um, generate text and image. Um, that is your decision. There is a link, AI placements, and that is where you can enable or disable the whole of these together and then choose which actions are available in each placement. So, uh, and you do currently, uh, you will need to have an organizational uh, subscription to either OpenAI or Azure. So you cannot do this with the free chat GPT, for example. What, uh, what we'll look at now is what it looks like for regular users. And the functionality depends on capabilities uh, at the moment. Both teachers and learners can do this. So let's look 
as a teacher who is actually in the description of a new course that he's been writing called Feline Welfare. And our teacher thought he would like to get AI to generate a, a course summary describing what's in this new course he's making. So from the tiny MCE editor, he clicks the um, sparkles icon, a new icon, and he has two options, AI generate text or AI generate image. So if he clicks AI generate text, the very first time that he sees this, uh, he has to agree to the AI usage policy. And this is very important. He, this will appear over on the right in a drawer and he will scroll down, agree, and then he'll be able to get some AI generated text. So on the left here <clears throat> is where he describes, where he uses a prompt. And I'm sure you're aware that writing good prompts is an art in itself. There are plenty of courses out there, including we have one on Moodle Academy, Moodle Teaching with AI. And so you need to be quite specific. In our prompt, he wants a course summary of approximately 30 words in British English, because that's the spelling that we want. And he's included the modules in the course. So once he's written his summary and is satisfied with it, he can then click generate text bottom right, and a text will be generated if he's happy with the summary already, then he just presses the insert button and it will be added to wherever he's working in the tiny MCE editor. In this instance, it's a course description where of course he can then edit and adapt it again. Or if he doesn't like it at all, he can press the regenerate button. Now that's text. Okay, in a similar way, so if he goes back in a similar way, um, I'm sorry, we need to have the captions to English because of uh, our recording if someone can change them to English. Thank you. Um, in a similar way, he can generate an image from the sparkles icon, clicking generate image, agree to the AI usage policy. And here is what you will see. So again, you need your prompt. Uh, our teacher's just written cats feeding, a very short prompt this time. You can choose the image quality, standard, high. I think standard is probably best for most times. And then choose the shape. We've got landscape here, but I'm going to go for square, I think. So if we, if we select square, and can we please have the captions to English? If we select square, then Click Generate Image. Let's wait and see what we get. Hmm. So we've got a standard square AI generated image of cats feeding. You can't actually see it in the bottom left, but it does actually say AI generated image if we were to scroll further down. And so also does any text and content summary. So people are aware that it is AI generated. Now, if you like that, you could click next and it would be added into that um, text editor. If you're not so impressed, I'm not particularly impressed, uh, you could click regenerate and you would have a new example, but we'll leave it for now. So that's how the text and image generation works. Let's look at as a student now at how the uh, summarizing content works. Remember, all of these depend on capabilities so students can also generate text and image unless the admin changes the capability. But I think what is useful from a student point of view is if you are in a course where there's a lot of text uh, to, have the to have the content summarized. In our feline welfare course, there is a book and there is a very text heavy chapter here in the nutrition book on dietary needs so our student is going to press the summarize button to have this content shortened and summarized. And again, remember that the first time she does it, she has to agree to the AI usage policy. So here it is actually over on the right, as previously mentioned, this is the AI usage policy. She needs to scroll down and agree, and then she'll be able to have her content summarized. That also appears uh, in the uh, drawer on the right, uh, AI summary. And you see that it does say generated by AI. 
and uh, she can copy it into a Word document, for example, outside of Moodle. She can also, if she doesn't like the summary, she can press to regenerate it. When she, she needs to copy it, by the way, because then when she leaves this page, the um, the summary will go. So it's useful when she's happy with it to copy it and put it somewhere else. Okay, that's a very brief explanation of how the um, AI placements, the tools work. So let's now look at the second large, uh, heavily promoted and very welcome feature, which is called subsections. So in Moodle 4.5, you can have sections within sections. Now, just so as not to give too big a surprise to teachers already using Moodle, this is disabled by default. So if your Moodle site is upgraded to Moodle 4.5 in the next week or two, don't worry, you won't suddenly have a new feature and, until it has been discussed and agreed between you and the administrator. Now, how this works is as follows. The administrator needs to go to Site Administration, Plugins, and from Manage Activities, this is where you see all of your activities, they need to select and enable subsection. Okay, it's already enabled here. As you can see, we have three already. Um, now, although this is in the activity screen, subsections don't appear in the activity chooser. So let's go and take a look at what it looks like for a teacher in a course to use these subsections. Our teacher is in a course in the feline welfare course they have edit mode enabled, and as they scroll down the course page, anywhere, they can click the plus sign. So this is between activities. For example, here, our teacher is clicking between a forum, tell us about yourself, and a glossary. And because subsections are enabled, he can click either activity or resource to go to the activity chooser as normal, or click subsection to create a new subsection. Um, I'm not going to show you what that looks like, basically because subsections are, work in exactly the same way as sections. So he would add it, he can change its name, he can add activities and resources uh, and so on. What you can't do in subsections is you can't uh, add a subsection. So we can't have subsections within subsections within subsections. And when you're in a subsection, you see the normal add an activity or resource button that you would see at the bottom of each section normally. Again, if subsections are not enabled, you won't have this option. You'll just have the normal add an activity or resource. Another thing to bear in mind is that subsections also count for your maximum number of sections within a course. So if your administrator has been very strict and only allowed, say, five, the maximum of five sections in a course, then if you have two sections and three subsections, that actually counts as your maximum number of sections, even though you might say, well, I only have two sections. It adds up to five. Let's take a look at what this is from a student point of view. So if we go back in as our student, on the left, here is a, a screenshot of a course page, and you see that between the forum, tell us about yourself, and the glossary of terms, there is a collapsed subsection, course information. And if our student clicks to expand it, we see in the little box on the right. So there is a, a lot of, there are a lot of other items. There are actually text files and PDF files and so on. With activity completion, and they can easily be collapsed. One good reason for using a subsection is if you have quite a few files, documents, that a student needs to look at that you would normally put in a folder. And it's very difficult with a folder to have activity completion because you can only have it on the folder. Whereas if you put them neatly in a collapsible, expandable course subsection, then they can mark these as done individually and they're not, they're not cluttering up your course page. That's just one example. I'm sure people will have many more inspired examples of using subsections. But I'm just going to pause 
And then we're going to pass over to Helen, who will talk about some other interesting improvements, starting with assignments. Thanks, Mary. Uh, before I talk about these other interesting improvements, I'm just going to go through the uh, chat with the questions because we've got quite a few questions about AI and subsections. So going through, uh, Peter asks, uh, I hope there are plans for other AI providers. For instance, we use Copilot since we can control the data flow with our Office 365 setup. Uh, I replied, there are indeed plans for other AI providers. Do you want to add anything to that, Mary? No, I was going to say exactly the same thing. Yes, it definitely, as I said, this is just the beginning of it. Okay, then Heather asks, what if you just want to edit the generated text a bit? Is that functionality there or would you have to regenerate the entire thing again? And I answered, uh, uh, when you generate text, if you accept it, then it's copied into the text editor where you can then further edit it. Yeah, absolutely. Then Kat asks, uh, is the AI usage policy editable? For example, to include other policy info we might have. Do you know the answer to that, Mary? I think it is. I think I've seen it in uh, the language strings. I believe so. We could probably check that, but it certainly should be, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Frederico asks uh, whether the uh, AI can summarize text from a PDF file. I haven't tried, actually. That is an interesting question. But I suspect if if you go to the summarize content, summarize button of an uploaded PDF file, it might just summarize the, uh, the settings of the file and not the content of the PDF. But it would be worth testing. Remember, this is all new to us as well, actually. Yes. Okay. It is worth mentioning while we're there, actually, that uh, the summarize button does appear in many other places. I think it's most useful in page and book or places where there, there is quite a lot of text, but it appears elsewhere, too. Thanks, Mary. Um, and moving on to questions about um, subsections, Andrew is asking, is there a limit to the number of subsections you can add to a section? Yeah, well... Um, okay, I'm not, I would imagine, and I am fairly confident on this, the limit of number of subsections you can add to a section is probably the same as the maximum number of sections you're allowed in your course. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking too. Um, Sandra is asking, uh, can subsections be moved or promoted to the section level? Uh, they can certainly be moved around. I I can't remember if I experimented promoting them to the section level myself, and I suspect perhaps not. Yeah. But if someone knows better, please feel free to let us know. But you can certainly think, move them, yes. Yeah, I think probably not. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, um, another uh, subsection question. Uh, how would subsections work with one topic course format which already has subtabs? Uh, oh, what a great question. Yeah, I think there's I'm... lots of really good questions that we haven't had a chance to explore yet. I have got my pen here and I'm going to physically write on a piece of paper to go and explore that after the uh, meeting. So, yes, that's a great question. So, sorry, we don't know the answer, but we're certainly very curious to find out. Yeah. Uh, then Madeline asks, are subsections always automatically collapsed at first? I'm not sure if they are automatically collapsed or if they're automatically expanded, but I tell you what you can do. After the webinar, obviously, and when you've completed our course, you could go to school.moodledemo.net uh, and try it out because subsections are enabled there and the actual feline welfare course is also highlighted there. So you could go in, you could change the course format, you could uh, try uh, moving them, you could try various things on a 4.5 site which has subsections enabled. Hey, uh, then Sabine asks, uh, why should every single student ask for a summary? Giving just one summary would be sufficient. Uh, that's um, a good point. Uh, well, 
Do you want to answer it? <laughs> well, I think it's because it is it is down to the individual, really. And I personally, I wouldn't necessarily want the same summary that Helen might want of a of a piece of uh, text, for example. So personally, I think it's better that it relates to the individual rather than a, a generic summary. But that's my personal opinion. That's a good point. Um, uh, what I was going to say, actually, as a teacher, if you feel that um, uh, you don't want your students generating individual summaries, then you can use capabilities to control it so that uh, they're not able to um, uh, see at the summary summarize button. Oh, yes, absolutely. You, you don't have to have any of these if you if you don't want to. You can just keep it for uh, teachers and not use the, sum the content summary for students. Okay. Um, then uh, Marcus, uh, thanks Marcus for helping answering some of these questions. Uh, Marcus says, I believe Copilot is from Microsoft and so is from the same family as OpenAI GPT. And so creating support should be straightforward. And Marcus also answers the question about um, summarizing the PDF. He says, you can copy and paste the contents of the PDF and it would summarize that, but it doesn't add much more than access to something like ChatGPT. Okay. Um, then um, uh, Marcus answers a bit more about... Uh, uh, gosh, it's getting quite technical here. Maybe we save this and suggest that you post in a forum on Moodle.org if you have further questions about providers and then people like Marcus can provide uh, expert help there rather than me trying to read out all the chat answers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and we'll, we'll, we need to think of the best place for all of these AI questions. Yeah, well. we need to actually, gosh, we've got so many different comments and questions. Uh, I think I'm going to have to move on because otherwise we're not going to get through yes. all the new yes. features. Uh, gosh, lots and lots. Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. please do go and post in Moodle.org and we'll try and think of a good place to collate all of these. Okay, yeah. shall we continue yeah. then, Helen? Yeah, okay. On to assignments. What's new in 4.5? Uh, well, we have uh, a new setting option for allowing unlimited additional attempts. We have layout and design improvements to the assignment submissions page. And we have two new assignment default settings in the site administration, which apply when creating new assignments on the site. So let's look at some of these in more detail. First of all, this new setting option um, uh, previously, you could only grant additional attempts manually or automatically until pass, but this new option automatically uh, enables unlimited additional attempts. Then a change in the assignment navigation, if you're upgrading uh, from 4.4 or lower, um, in 4.5, you can view all submissions via a submissions link in the assignment navigation. Then the main improvements we made to the assignment submissions page. First off, we have a, a handy user search. This is the same as the one in the grade book where you just start typing a student's name or email. And then other improvements in the table, uh, usernames and pictures are in one column, saving space. And instead of having to scroll down to access the filter options and other settings below the table, everything is now available near the top of the page. Here we can see that uh, filters such as the status are near the top of the page, so you can easily see what's selected without having to scroll down below the table. Uh, also at the top uh, is uh, advanced options. This includes marking workflow filters if you're using marking workflow and also an include suspended participants checkbox. Then in the assignment submissions table itself, we now have a grade actions menu. This is a change from 
And in that menu is where you can find a grade link for each student. Then in the table, we also have a new submissions actions menu. This is another change from 4.4. Um, and you can find all the links to edit the submission, grant an extension, etc. The table has been given a sticky header, meaning column headings are always visible when scrolling through the list of users. Another improvement that's not actually shown in this screenshot is the functionality to scroll horizontally anywhere you're on the page, rather than previously you had to go to the bottom of the table to find a horizontal scroll bar. Also, uh, we have a sticky footer for the page, which provides access to bulk actions and other options without needing to scroll. Moving on to badges, uh, in preparation for incorporating Open Badges 3.0 in a Moodle LMS 5.0, in 4.5, we've streamlined badge creation and management, and you can also create badges with the same name. Here in this screenshot, uh, we've created two badges with the same name, but different completion criteria. If, for example, a student is unwell and can't complete the assignment, the teacher can still recognize their work and manually award the badge. Another feature in 4.5, uh, we have a, a record RTC. In addition to audio and video, we also have screen as a recording type. And we can also choose to enable video and screen recording to be paused and then resumed. So looking at the record screen option, here we see the option in the tiny MCE. Uh, there's a record screen capability if you want to restrict this screen recording, say, to teachers only. Then here we see how the screen recording made by the teacher looks like in a forum post. Another new feature in 4.5 is more notifications for learners. We've got three new assignment notifications, two of which remind students to submit in time and one informs them if it's overdue. And then one new quiz notification when a quiz is opening soon. Let's have a look how these notifications look like. So first of all, assignment due. This is sent 48 hours before the due date and includes a link to the assignment. Then assignment overdue. This notification mentions uh, the cutoff date if that's set in the assignment and also has a link to the assignment. Then another uh, example notification is the quiz opening soon, also with a link to the quiz. Just noting that all these notifications may be sent via web, email or Mo Moodle app, depending on the user's notification preferences. OK, thanks, Helen. Um, I'm just looking at the questions. I'm assuming you can look at them as well. We've still got quite a few AI questions, so uh, we'll move on from them. Marcus says, nice to have screen recording. Um, Doug is asking, is there any way to adjust the size of the headers in the grading table? Um, not sure about that. In the, so in the assignment grading table. Yeah, I'm not sure either. That would, no. again, be a good question for a forum on Moodle.org. Yes. Um, OK, I think that's yeah. it, apart from the AI questions. <laughs> OK, well, let's carry on. And then uh, we might even have some time after the end of this presentation to, to go through some more questions and comments. So I'm going to continue with uh, extra bits for administrators and teachers, starting with administrators, and we're going to look at site registration, authentication, enrollment, security, performance, availability, restrict access, cohorts, 
custom reports from Report Builder, and I'm going to give you the list of new capabilities, some of which we've mentioned already. So in terms of site registration, we do very much recommend that you register your site because it helps us to know how Moodle is used and helps us to improve it. So there is a new um, section here where you can choose your organization type. That will uh, very much help us know which kind of institutions and individuals are using Moodle. And then scrolling down to the bottom of the registration screen, we are going to get plugin usage data if you are using plugins and AI usage stats if you have signed up to one of the AI API providers. In terms of authentication and enrollment, if you use external database enrollment, there are new course start and end dates. And I've got two screenshots to share with you. There's an option now to hide the login form you might wonder why. Well, I'll explain because personally, I think it's a very good uh, new feature. And manual enrollment. So in Moodle 4.4, a notification was sent out when a teacher manually enrolled participants in the same way that when a student uh, self-enrolls, they get notified. Now in Moodle 4.5, teachers can actually edit that message, the welcome message, when they manually enroll a student. They weren't able to do it previously. So in terms of the login form, if you go to manage authentication from common settings, you can uncheck the box that says display manual login form. And the reason for this is if, for example, on your site, you only use OAuth 2, so all of your users log in by pressing the Google button. What is the point of having a manual login where they might indeed, and I speak from personal experience, press the manual login button, be told their password is wrong or they, uh, try to change their password. They can't change it because they've logged in with Google. So if you, so you can now um, not display the manual login form, so this won't happen. Um, so that's one useful feature, I think. And secondly, as a teacher in a course, if you go to enrollment methods, you'll see we have manual enrollments. Our teacher has manually enrolled 11 here. And there is a pencil icon which he can click, which takes him just to the message. Uh, he can decide who the welcome message comes from and he can customize the welcome message. He can't do anything else within the manual enrollment um, uh, module uh, for security purposes. So he can't unenroll himself manually or whatever. So uh, that is something very welcome if you are a teacher and you manually enroll learners and you want to customize it for yourself. Next up is security and performance. And this is our opportunity to thank the Moodle Users Association because this was a project of better user session management. This was an MUA project. They sponsored it. Um, it was also contributed to by our community developers, by our partners, and was highly voted. If you'd like to know more, uh, I've linked to the tracker issue there as well. Still talking about security here, there's a new admin setting. Um, well, not a new admin setting, but a changed admin setting. So when you change your password now, uh, the default is that you will log out. It, it was set to no before, but you will be logged out from now on. And also there is an option to log out of all sessions. When you're in a current session, any saved sessions, you can log out. Let me show you our students again. Here she is in her profile. And you see that at the very bottom, she has a button saying, log out all other browser sessions, all of these, and here is her current session. And if you're wondering, well, who's student Barbara Gardner? Go to our school demo site, school.moodledemo.net, where you will see the, the sample course here, and you'll be able to try out these Moodle 4.5 new features. Now, availability. So from the admin plugins, there is a section called availability restrictions, and it has been improved to make it um, more user friendly. So we now have a brand new column 
where you can enable or disable by toggling any of these restrictions if you don't want to use one of them and you don't want them to appear for teachers in courses. And then when it says default display mode, that basically means if a teacher chooses it, is has it got its eye closed by default, which means uh, people won't be able to see it. So for example, if I went to restriction by activity completion as an admin and I clicked to close the eye, then when a teacher in a course sets up an activity, uh, that eye would automatically be closed, which is usually what most people want anyway. So that's quite helpful and, and saves time. Okay, uh, that's where we've got up to. We've three more to do for admins. So we're looking at cohorts, report builder and capabilities. Uh, an improvement for cohorts, which I think will be very welcome if you are an organization which has lots of cohorts, many of which you don't need anymore. You can now simply go to your cohorts page, select the ones you don't want and press delete selected. I know this had a lot of votes and was very popular. Every new release, we have improvements to custom reports. Uh, which uses report builder functionality from Moodle Workplace. If you want to see the, all of them, there is the tracker issue. There were so many, as usual, that I just picked my favorites, which is that there is now a new custom report source, competencies, if you use them on your site. And if you're reporting on users, you can see their time zone and their language. So taking a quick look at those, Custom reports, this is a competencies report. We've got a digital literacies basic framework and we want to see uh, user Mark Ellis proficiency. So if we click apply, yes, he's a proficient in each of these digital literacies competencies. Now we're going to look at a user report, users by cohort. So we have the users on the left and we can see their language that they use, quite a variety of languages, and we can see their time zone as well. So these are new options when you're reporting on users. And now we come to the new capabilities. There are quite a few, but if you look at them briefly, all of them on this first page here are related to the new AI subsystem. So as Helena and I have mentioned, if you don't want um, a student to summarize text, uh, or if you don't want them to generate image or text, then this is where you can de decide and define who can do what relating to AI. Similarly, uh, more new capabilities, for example, uh, recording the screen. So both teachers and students can record their screen, which I think is useful. But if you don't want a student to be able to do that, you can change it there. There's also a content bank custom fields uh, capability, which we're going to mention shortly. And on the final list, we also have some safe exam browser quiz settings and a big blue button capability, which we will also talk about in a moment. So I'm going to finish off <clears throat> with uh, what's more for teachers. Mentioning big blue button, so now there is a new setting. I don't have a screenshot because it's not very pretty, but you will find it useful. There is a setting for the administrators so that teachers can decide within their course big blue button setting if they want learners to be able to see a presentation in advance of the webinar or not. Teacher can always see it, but if the teacher wants the learners to see it in advance, they can check a box. Feedback activity has had various navigation and uh, user interface improvements. And then we're going to look at content bank and quiz. So we're going to finish on a high because quiz is very powerful and always has many improvements. So for the content bank, now as an administrator, you have a new setting uh, where you can add content bank custom fields. These will then be available to teachers when they are in the content bank, creating and editing H5P. So and as, a, as an example here, we've just added levels and it's a drop down men, uh, menu of basic, intermediate, advanced. 
So when a teacher is creating or editing a H5P activity, they, for their own benefit, they can specify what level it is using that custom uh, content bank custom field that's been created by the admin. And finally, moving on to quiz, um, there is the possibility now to regrade selected questions. As an administrator, you have a new admin setting to disable what we call sticky defaults. I'll explain it because you might find it useful. A couple of improvements in drag and drop questions, quiz questions. And then finally, the whole category, quiz questions category management has been much improved as I will show you now. So here we are in a quiz as a teacher uh, students have submitted to the quiz. We've got the results, but perhaps the teacher feels that a couple of these questions need to be regraded for whatever reason. It's now possible to select um, questions, not all of them, and then regrade them. And here in the admin, uh, you have the option to untick saving question options as user preference defaults. Basically, what that means is in a previous version of Moodle, it was set so that when a teacher creates a question, um, whatever settings they used, often multiple choice, but other questions too, were then saved. So the next time they created that question, they, they still had the settings from the previous question. This is very useful if you tend to make similar kinds of questions. However, for some teachers, that was quite frustrating because they always change the settings and use a variety of settings. So in agreement with all the teachers in the organization, the admin can turn that off so that each time a teacher creates a question of the same type, they can define uh, what its settings are. And finally, uh, when you go into categories of questions in a quiz, and you see we've got quite a few in our feline welfare course, notice that you can move them by drag and drop. You can simply drag and drop them up and down rather than the very complex arrows previously. And as in many other places in modern Moodle, we have the three dots actions menu where you click on, where you can also move if you prefer, you can edit, delete, and export. So the whole management of these question categories has been brought up to date and made much smoother. And that in fact is all that we could think of to tell you. So I'm going to pass back to Helen now to see if we have any more comments and questions in the last 10 minutes or so. Thanks, Mary. We do indeed have more uh, comments and questions. Uh, just noting, though, that if you have questions about uh, standard Moodle, um, not to do with 4.5 new features and improvements, then do go to Moodle.org and ask your questions in the forum. As in this uh, webinar, we can we should just be focusing on the 4.5, what's new. Mm -hmm. So uh, looking at the chat, uh, Tom comments, about the the admin the site admin setting for hiding the login form, saying I have a few colleagues who want the login page to only display the O auth buttons, and have been hacking the CSS to make it work for years. They will be so happy to have that admin feature. Yes, nice yes, absolutely. Uh, then Kat asks about uh, the um, teachers being able to add a. Um, an enrollment message for manual enrollment. She asks, does it work with API enrollments, uh, which counts as manual? And uh, I answered that um, this option for teachers to be able to edit the enrollment message is available in the standard manual enrollment method and also self-enrollment from before. Uh, but for any custom uh, enrollment methods that you're using, any additional plugins, you probably need to edit um, or update your plugin to make it work. Okay. Um, then anyway. I do see some comments further down about quiz is wonderful. The improvement <laughs> you like for category management is very nice. Yes. Yeah, that that's very popular actually. I must say. Okay. And yeah, I think the others were just general Moodle questions. Yeah. 
Okay. So we- should we go back and have a look more about the hot topic of AI? I'm just scrolling uh, all the way back. I can't remember exactly where we got to talking about AI. I think there were some comments about AI providers. Let's see. Um, um, okay. Um, Alf, actually, Alfred is. I don't think we covered this. Uh, did we? Uh, why would sections or subsections be limited by an administrator? Did you answer that one? Um, why? Well, section. But there is a setting in uh, the site administration for the maximum number of sections, which is fifty-two by default. And I suspect most people, most admins, leave it at that. Um, that is possibly what you're thinking about. So it probably won't affect you unless your administrator has specifically limited the maximum number of sections for a course. Um, uh, what else? Um, there's a question. Uh, when do we hope to be able to generate quiz questions? Uh, from sections or just a course item. I'm using it in another LMS and would really wish to see it in Moodle. This is not uh, related to um, standard Moodle, although I'm, I suspect at some point, well, we already do have some uh, features, uh, various workarounds of generating quiz questions. Um, for you know AI plugins that are constantly being developed. If you do the t Moodle teaching with AI course on Moodle Academy, we also look at various ways that you can do this. I think everything is happening very quickly in terms of AI. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason is thanks, Jason, for helping answering the question about whether you can edit the AI policy. And um, he says there's indeed a resource in the AI component called user policy, so it can be edited. Okay. Um, Heli is thanking me for checking the one topic. Oh, so do you mean do you mean the plugin one topic, or do you mean the show the course formats? The course setting, show one section per page. I will look at the show one section per page and I will add it to the what's new in Moodle 4.5 course here on Academy, actually. Okay, Matt is asking about uh, if you use AI about paying for it uh, or billing. I think it's answered a bit further down. I don't know if you want to answer it, Mary. Well, if you're using AI, you're paying the AI provider, aren't you? You're going to open AI, you pay them, and then you'll be able to have the appropriate organizational um, uh, key or API key to add to your Moodle. Is, is that what? Yeah, yes, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh... Yeah, Tom confirms that you need your own paid access to the AI API. Yes. Um, but Marcus uh, points out that 4.5 includes settings such as limit the number of requests that the OpenAI API provider can receive across the entire site every hour to keep, your, keep the cost down, uh, but also um, there's a lot of work behind the scenes to support a wide variety of pri providers, including ones that you can self-host, as in only you only provide you only pay for the hosting, uh, such as Olama. And we do have some documentation on Olama in the Moodle docs uh, to get you started with that. Yes. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions? Otherwise, we might go and uh, have a look at our final two slides. Yeah, Matt is saying, careful with your budget, everyone. Yeah. Okay. Um, Marcus says the cost of AI 
inference, things like access to the chat GPT is plummeting and there are good competitors coming in who are very, very affordable. Doug is asking a little bit further up, is there a way to exempt, for example, certain portions of the course from AI generated summaries? Um, at the moment, if you enable the content summary, you get a button in virtually every activity. I am led to believe by our developers that this will be worked on in a future version of Moodle so that the teacher can specify where they would like the content summary button and where they don't want it. It's more useful in some places, less useful in others. So they are aware of this and hopefully that will happen. Uh, Louis is asking, where's the Teaching with AI course that you mentioned, Mary? It's on Moodle.academy, um, which is where this webinar is hosting, Moodle Teaching with AI. Okay, well, um, do you think we should move on, Helen? Are we going to get any more questions? Yep, I think it's good to move on. Okay, then. Well, I mean, I've really enjoyed this, I have to say, even though we didn't know the answers to all the questions, we got people uh, participating who did know, and that was very useful. Thank you very much. Please help us to grow Moodle Academy by contributing to its developments. Please suggest topics to be covered in future webinars and courses. When you go to the front page of Moodle Academy, there is a Get Involved course. Go there, make a suggestion, and in fact, perhaps you could help co-present webinars or help co-create courses and share your expertise. Something else which is very close to my heart is to help translate our courses so that we can be more inclusive. We have a course called Translate Moodle Academy, which explains how we use a particular plugin to, con to translate our courses so that we have one course and it's, it's available in several different languages translated by our community. So if you speak another language as well as English, uh, as your native language, please do that course and help translate them. Maybe even the What's New in Moodle 4.5 course. Help us spread the word in other ways too. If you complete a course on Moodle Academy, you can earn a badge and you can share that badge on social media. Tell others about Moodle Academy, tell them about our webinars. And also if you're an educator, you might like to look at our program for experienced educators, the Moodle Educator Certification. We have a quiz to check if you're ready. Have you got what it takes to get your MEC or MEQ Moodle Educator Qualification? And, and just a little uh, top secret, we will be working, we will be presenting you with an uh, equivalent administrator program early next year. And I think that's it then. So thank you very much. Thank you from me, Mary Cooch. Uh, thanks from me, Helen Foster, especially all the people who helped answering questions in the chat. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you in the forums. Goodbye. Goodbye.